So thank you for your time with us today. Uh, this is really about helping you explore your postgraduate options with the variety of the schools that we have. Earlier in the day, we had the School of Business, School of Accountancy, School of Economics. And today with us, I have two of my colleagues. Um, uh, both are we, M, so Prof M Marche from School of Law and Prof Michel uh, from School of Information System. And they will share with you some of the programs that they have and to see whether that suits your career aspirations. For myself, I'm the Dean of the Postgraduate Program. So I help coordinate and look after the entire suite of programs that we have on the postgraduate professional at SMU. So, so just want to give you, a, a, again, just to give you that sense of portfolio of the programs that we have. Of course, we're going to talk about SOL and SIS today, but as a whole, as a university, uh, we, we obviously offer a, a number of programs. So I sort of put a quick summary here uh, for you. Uh, for more details, obviously, you can go to our website, look at the you know, programs and download the brochures, etc. Today, until six o'clock, you can also talk to our career advisors our admission counselors, uh, and I will show you how you would do that if you have not done so during the headhunt fair today. So just to give you, a, again, as I was saying, the portfolio of the program that we have, it, these are all done in school colors that you may not be aware of, of course, but the blue bits, the, the nine blue ones, six at the top, three in the middle, uh, the School of Business programs. And, and these are, again, your typical, the first three are what we call general management program. These are MBAs, EMBAs, Master in Management. The next three are what we call our finance programs, our wealth management, applied finance, quantitative finance. And the second row, the first three blue ones are what we call specialized masters. They're sort of business program, uh, uh, but specialized in certain functional areas. So, so whether it's human capital, whether it's communication management or innovation. The two red ones are from our School of Accountancy, it's a Master of Professional Accounting. Uh, and Master of Science in Accounting with a focus on data analytics. Uh, the gold color one is our School of Information System. Uh, it's a, actually the biggest program we have at SMU uh, and Michelle will tell you more about it later on. The bottom left, uh, left hand side uh, is our progr two programs from our School of Economics, Master of Science in Economics and uh, MSFE, a Master of Science in Financial Economics. And the last two, last but not least, this is SOL, this is our School of Law with their uh, JD program, Juris Doctor program, and LLM, Master of Laws program, all right? Uh, I also sort of uh, give you an intent, uh, sort of indicative dates and, and more and, and summary here, uh, because I think everybody is different in their journey in exploring a postgraduate program. Some are quite ready to think about, you know, which one do I want to do? Some are still considering very early in the pipeline. So sort of give you an idea that some programs are doable part-time, full-time. The length of the will take if you're on a part-time mode or full-time mode and the start dates for the program. For many of our programs, we do have two start dates. So this is typically between July and January, August and January. Uh, for example, MITB will have two intake. Uh, August, this upcoming August and January, the part-time program is 24 months and the full-time program is 12 months. The JD is only full-time basis at 36 months. It is, a, it is the longest program we have. It is a three-year qualifying law program, and the LLM is doable part-time, full-time, 12 months, 24 months. Again, that just gives you sort of an, a, a broad idea where we are. If you are more immediate in terms of your you know, wish to pursue a graduate program, then obviously August starts is what you're looking at. Uh, and of course, January as well for some of our programs. There are some other programs that starts in October. Again, it's, a, it's, it's, it's quite a wide range. But I think what is most important is, you know, your career aspiration, where you want to be and how we can help you get there. All right. And, and, and last one for me is, is really about how to, this is a very short uh, uh, session. We may not be able to answer all your questions. When my two colleagues are presenting, I will try my best to answer by typing the rest of the question that comes up from the Q&A. But after this session, if you want to look for more information, our website is listed here, uh, uh, smu.edu.sg slash masters. You can contact us via email or through our social media channel. Uh, today, uh, as we were saying earlier, there is a, uh, a live session, live chat session. So if you have something more specific about your background, what you want to do, and, and very personal type questions, uh, uh, you can go to our website, as I said, 
at the very bottom right, you can see that small little button, the gold color button there, that's a check with us now, that is open till six o'clock. And even after this, uh, it, it's uh, a help, a chat, chat function is available on our website, Monday to Friday, I think nine to five. So you can always reach out to us. Uh, again, the, the, the decision making process can be quite detailed because it is a significant investment in your time, resources and effort. And we hope that we have the right fit for you and we can help you master your future. So without further ado, uh, uh, my two panelists again, uh, M from School of Law is going to you know, start with a, a presentation about the programs within School of Law. And then later on, we'll hand over to Michelle. So for now, I'm going to stop my screen share. And I believe uh, my colleague Ivan is going to help uh, Marsha with the slide deck and the clicking and everything else. So over to you guys. Okay, thanks. Thanks very much. And the fact that I'm getting assistance in slide sharing already suggests that I'm not with SISS, otherwise I would have been able to handle this on my own. I'm instead with SOL. So um, I thought the first thing I should show you is the gorgeous building that we have. So here you get, if you want to view from the outside, and if you look behind me, this is what the inside of our library looks like. But the real thing, and Ivan, we can hear swiftly move to number two, uh, the real thing that lawyers do is they like to use authority. They will think if someone else can put it better, that's what you should do. And clearly within Singapore, there is no greater authority than the Chief Justice, C.J. Menon. Now, at the he said the following. He said, successful lawyering requires far more than just a solid knowledge of the law. You need competences that are commonly associated with other disciplines, from business, finance, project management. Now, that kind of vision, this view of law as being contextual, as involving more than just legal knowledge, is something that we hold very dear at SOL and that we try to integrate in the two postgraduate programs that we have. Okay, next slide. So we have two postgraduate offerings. Payment say before, we have the Juris Doctor uh, program. I'll say a little bit more about the details of that program in a second. We also have a Master of Law programs and that comprises three different tracks. A judicial studies track that is targeted at um, sitting judges or those who aspire to a career on the bench. Uh, so I will largely leave that aside for now. Then we have a business and finance law in Asia with the name being pretty self-explanatory as areas that we discuss within that track. And then last, we also offer a dual LLM with our partner university, Queen Mary University in London, which is a dual LLM in commercial, which will allow you to complete um, over the course of 18 months, two complementary law degrees, spending part of your time in the UK and part of your time with us in Singapore. Okay, next slide. Now, um, here I thought, even though I'm not in the business school, we, we all care about channeling other disciplines. So here is the best possible business pitch I can give you as to why you should pursue a law degree, a postgraduate at SMU. One, and this is most important, I think, is that we have G exclusivity. Now, what that means is that for both of the programs, you will take the vast majority, if not all of your courses, with fellow LLM and JD candidates. To put it quite bluntly, and I think we're all here you know, in, in the seating group, you will not be seated with the 18-year-old girls and the 20-year-old boys just out of an S as you're trying to grab a new discipline. Two, um, all of our courses are taught by full-time faculty. And the key advantage that we thereby offer is that we have people who are able to spend entire weeks thinking about the kind of points they ought to discuss with you in class, how they want to do this, and they will have the ability to read up and hence inform you about the latest developments in other jurisdictions as well. 
Now, at the same time, we understand that law is also a very practical discipline. So we also bring in leading practitioners, either to give talks or to teach the more practice-oriented courses, um, including in areas like litigation, for instance, or evidence. Now three, and that brings me back to the quote by, by Chief Justice Menon that I started with, is that the law education that you will get with us um, involves a lot of interaction, experiential learning, with quite a bit of industry exposure. We have the ability for you to participate in moot courts, so basically mock law trials. Um, you will be able to go on law study missions. Now then fourth, and you uh, saw that on uh, the picture behind me already, the facilities that we have are state of the art. And let me here say something that in this time of COVID-19, when we've had to switch from face-to-face -face teaching to online teaching, that also means that we have, if you want, the technology to do the requisite broadcasting. And that's to give you the example of mood courts. Those of our students who have been involved in these mock trials were able initially to come to school and participate virtually competitions being held in other jurisdictions in our purpose-built moot court in the law school building. Now, fifth, location is key. Um, and here, I'm not going to say anything about the advantages of being in the city center, the good food locations and everything around you but focus on what this means legally. You are one MRT stop away from the area where all the leading law firms are located. You are 750 meters away from the Supreme Court and that same distance away from Singapore's parliament. So if you would like to, and a lot of our students do this, to go and attend court, sit in for a parliamentary session, you're able to do so before or after class. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so then uh, let me give you a little bit more detail about the two different programs. The Juris Doctor, as Taman just alluded to, is a foundational law degree. That means that it is the longest postgraduate degree on offer. Full time, we are not able Is that at the end of the day, when you graduate, you are eligible to be called to the Singapore Bar and to become a practicing lawyer in Singapore. There are some prerequisites, which you can see at the bottom of the slide. You need to have a GPA of 3.0 when you graduate. And here to anticipate a question, um, in the past 10 or so cohorts, we have fewer than 1% of our graduates who failed to meet that threshold. Um, and you need to complete a practical training course. But for lawyer, the JD degree is the option that you ought to pursue. Now, for those of you who already have an initial degree in law, you may want to consider the LLM, which is an advanced degree, which is uh, able to allow you to deepen the knowledge that you have. This is one year in duration if you opt to take this full time, but we also offer this on a part-time basis where you would take it in, in two years. We try uh, to the extent possible to schedule classes in the evening, but do bear in mind, even if you opt for part-time, that you will need to take some leave in order to attend some of your classes. Now, as an advanced law degree of only one year in duration, the LLM will not enable you to be called to the bar and to become a practicing lawyer in Singapore. However, you would be able to become a foreign qualified lawyer or a foreign qualified practitioner. Okay, next slide, please. Now then um, to give you a sensing of the kind of demographics and to really, uh, if you want, put, put the evidence out there when we say you're never too old to embark on a law degree. The age range for our JD candidate candidates is anywhere from the early 20s until um, really the, the late 40s. Um, average age is almost 30 and is actually steadily going up. Um, for the LLM, similarly, we will have those who have just completed their undergraduate law degree all the way up to those. Now is the time to get up to speed with, for instance, the latest developments in 
technology or commercial law. You can see that also from the fact that the work experience on average for the LLM is far higher than that for our JV program. Um, but then here we are very pleased to say that the gender balance is really pretty even. Okay, next slide. Now focusing then a little bit more on the detailed curriculum. The because it is a three-year program, we require you to complete 25 course units, which translates more or less into 25 uh, uh, modules you will need to take. The vast majority of these, 18 and a half, are what we call core courses. You have to take these. These run the gamut from contract to tort to property to public law, criminal law, this is everything you need in order to be a well-rounded, holistic lawyer. At the same time, you will have six and a half CU worth of law electives that will allow you to specialize or deepen your, your interest in particular areas of the law. And this is also where you would be able to uh, develop the interdisciplinary skills that I mentioned at the outset. Now, in terms of the experiential learning and the immersion, for the JD degree, you are required to complete a six week internship, which can be taken in batches, so three weeks in one law firm, three weeks in another one, to allow you to familiarize yourself with what working in the law truly entails. And for many of our students, this is also the jumping off point to lend themselves their first uh, job upon graduation. Then uh, you are also required to complete 20 hours of pro work and here I am very proud to say that the vast majority of our JD candidates completes a far greater number of hours. Not only because they really want to hone the skills that they have acquired so far, but because they want to give back to the community already when they are in law school. Now, if we then turn over to the LLM, and here I take the cross-border business and finance law track, you need to complete eight courses. So you see this, the, the marked difference, three years for JD, one year for the LLM. The eight courses are divided up into three common courses. Every single LLM student will need to take these courses of the track. Law of obligations, law and technology, mediation. These to us are the kinds of skills, the type of knowledge that any lawyer these days will need in order to flourish. You then have three CUs worth of track core courses specific to the CBLF track that fall within the areas of corporate and financial law, foreign business and investment law, as well as technology law. And then there are two CUs Sorry. of electives. Just to interrupt, just perhaps uh, two more minutes or so, so we can uh, cycle as well to Prof. Michel. Absolutely, because I think Ivan, if you click through, Then the last thing that I would want to mention is the entry requirements. So at this point, you're probably raring to go, which is very good. Um, for the JD, we require you to have a cum laude or a second class uppers um, or anything equivalent to that. You also see the English language requirements for those who have not studied at a university that has English as the medium. You're not required to complete the LSAT, which is effectively the, the admission test that US law schools use. We would encourage you to submit your results if you have them. Now, for the uh, LLM, you need to have a good undergraduate law degree and similarly the English language test. Now, the final thing I want to mention is that if you do not meet the uppers requirement for the JD, or the undergraduate requirement for the LLM, all is not lost. If you are able to compensate for this in some way, for instance, by having a very good LSAT score or ample work experience that has involved you dealing with legal or regulatory type issues, we warmly welcome you to apply because we will give your application very serious consideration. And we actually have quite a number of people on our program who may not have met the, if you want, initial entry requirements, were able to show us why they deserve a spot on the program and have been doing very well so far. So that's it for me from now, over to Michelle. All right, 
Um, I will now be sharing my slides. All right, welcome to the Master of IT in Business, MITB session. So MITB is a rather old program. We started in the year 2007, so it's been 13 years. Over the 13 years, we have sharpened our curriculum and introduced new tracks. So in the year 2018, we finalized with three different tracks called the Financial Technology and Analytics. This is in fact FinTech, where a lot of people understand what is FinTech today, the latest technology in banking world. Analytics was a second track that we introduced in the year 2011, and it's the largest track among all the three tracks with about 60% of our students in analytics. The AI track was introduced in 2018, and it is really to um, attract students of a different breed where they are interested to do coding, to write algorithms, to build systems. Our program has grown over the years. As you can see, our intake has been quite strong, and year after year, we are increasing our intake. As Tammy has mentioned, this is the single largest uh, master program at SMU. Our last intake in the year 2019, that means academic year 2019, which will include those who came in in August 2019 and January 2020, we took in a total of 231 students. And over the years, we have graduated close to 1,000. And currently in the system, we have part-time and full-time students together, about 366 of them. We are very humbled uh, to be ranked number one in Asia on the QS Business Analytics rankings for two consecutive years, 2019 and 2020. So uh, in this particular ranking, there are six different measures. Two of the measures that we did very well is alumni outcome and employment opportunities, which means that our students after this program have been very well um, employed by the industry. This is another ranking called the CS ranking. If you were to look at uh, Asia universities in artificial intelligence, in fact, SMU is ranked number 10 in the Asian um, universities. As you can see, most of them are in China and we are ahead of uh, our very friendly uh, AUs here in Singapore. Among the AI curriculum and the uh, professors who will be teaching you, one of them is the top 10 AI scientists to watch. His name is uh, Akshat and you'll be learning from him if you were to do the AI track. The other gentleman who is uh, also one of the well-known uh, prestigious IEEE fellow is our Professor Stephen Hoy. He is one of those rare um, IEEE fellows under the age of 40 and he belongs to this youngest category. He will also be the one teaching in the AI track. Among our students, we often hear applicants who ask us, if I don't have a technical background, can I still study MITB? So this is just a breakdown of the people who came to us, you can see that about 60% of them do have technical background like computing and engineering, but we have the balance of the 40% where they came from business, arts and social sciences, sciences, even philosophy or even language. We do not um, stop people in terms of telling you that you must have a technical background. What we want is if you have the ability to learn, you want to learn and you're not afraid to, to, to do coding or to learn software, that will be fine. One of the very uh, interesting component of our program is for the full-time student, you have the opportunity to choose to do a six-month internship. This six-month internship is during your candidature period of one year. So it can be quite intense that you do six months internship during the day and come back in the evenings to, to attend your classes. All our classes are Monday to Friday's evenings as well as Saturday's morning and afternoons. This is also to uh, mix the full-time and part-time students within the class and also to enable the full-time student to go for their internship. Obviously, after the internship, our students will be working with mostly the internship company or some of them can go beyond that. They even go to join Apple and Facebook in the US. We offer a total of 38 different courses, which obviously is a lot for you to choose. To complete this program, you only need to complete 13 of them. So there are some graduation requirements depending on whether you're in the FinTech track, the analytics track, or the AI track. You have to fulfill the track requirements, the track electives, and so on. Uh, out of 13, you can complete it in one year full-time uh, to a maximum of two years candidature, or two year part-time to a maximum of four years candidature. Regardless of which track, every track will have um, some open electives which you are allowed to take courses across another track. For example, if I'm from the analytics track, some of my open electives, I can take it from FinTech, I can take it from AI, or even other SMU master's programs. 
being an IT school, we have many software that you can explore. So you can look at uh, this particular page where we have software in terms of data analytics, artificial intelligence, and even banking software. So our students will be exposed to the different software and tools that they can actually build systems, uh, build solutions and algorithms for the data science uh, um, practices. We have a lot of scholarships and awards. So you're looking at a page where um, different kinds of scholarships and uh, awards that are given. Uh, most of them are partial, except for Richard Lim Lee and the Vin Group uh, Young Talent Scholarship, both number four and number five, they are full scholarship but limited to Philippines and uh, Vietnam students only. Uh, the rest are non-nationality, um, uh, except the ASEAN scholarship, obviously you have to be from ASEAN. The rest, they are independent of uh, nationality. We have also discounts. Uh, if you are interested in AI, we do have an AI talent development grant. This is only for Singapore citizen. The rest, we have discounts, and these discounts are across all SMU master's program. For SMU alumni, 20% off for August and January intakes and for applicants from the other five uh, AUs you get 10% off from the August and January intake. We do also welcome some of our international students who came to Singapore at SMU to attend our summer program or our exchange program. You can also explore some of the Singapore government scholarship which is SGD. This one as long as you're studying AI or analytics Singapore citizen you can apply for it. There are also OCBC scholarship meant for AI only. Uh, this is a very competitive scholarship. Uh, OCBC will grant three scholarships, full scholarships to all AI programs in Singapore. That means you're competing with the other AI program applicants from the other universities. What is good about this is it is, has to be Singaporean and also full scholarship. And at the end, you are guaranteed a job at uh, OCBC. The admission criteria uh, for us, we need a valid uh, GMAT GRE score. If you have graduated from the six local university, you can replace with, with our SMU admission test. We also allow um, excellent applicants from the six university to apply with their GPA of at least 3.5 out of 5 within the last five years of graduation. Such students may be exempted from the admission test. So the, the rest like IELTS, uh, UKBI and TOEFL is meant for graduates who did not study in the uh, medium of instruction being English. We conduct interviews and we welcome people who are strong in IT or operations and obviously not afraid to learn IT, not afraid to use software. Uh, particularly, we are looking at degrees on computing, engineering, math and other technical fields are preferred. But as mentioned, 40% of our candidates do not have technical degrees. Particularly for AI track, because AI is very coding intensive. We require the applicant to show us that coding is already part and parcel of their life. So we need the applicant to submit their coding artifact together for the application into the AI track. Our August intake, um, we are targeting to take in 145. We have already reached close to that number. So we would like uh, applicants who are interested to really apply very quickly because the application deadline is 31st of May. Obviously, if you are not in time for this, we are always open for the January 2020 meeting. Some of our awards that are being won by our faculty, like myself, I've won the Terra Data University Network Award in terms of the best teaching case. Our students are also winning awards over different kinds of um, competitions, like the Grand Champion in the Best Strategy Invitation in 2018. They also won in the previous years as well. And our students also won awards in the IEEE Visual Analytics Challenge and other kinds of awards in uh, business challenges. Our students are also publishing books. So this is just one of our students who published books in data science. And another student uh, was named the 40 Under 40 Award in India, and he also published books as well. Uh, MITV is a thought leader in terms of what we do. We also involve the industry very closely. We organize large events all right in terms of bringing in keynote speakers like last year we have speakers from Citibank uh, LinkedIn Shopee to talk about the the hot topics like uh, balancing profit privacy responsibility in an intelligent world during this kind of events we will showcase what our students can do and we will allow our students to really interact with the industry and the industry coming in to understand what our program is doing Apart from MITB, we have established graduate pathways beyond MITB. 
We have partners with University of Melbourne where you can continue after MITB to get a second master degree at University of Melbourne. Instead of spending two years there, you just need to spend one year. We also allow our MITB students to enroll in two of the PhD courses so that at the end, if you decide to continue the PhD, you can have two course exemption. At SIS, you also have a Doctor of Engineering program, which you, you can consider to continue after that, where you can have up to four course credit of exemption. Obviously, you don't need to discuss this today. This is just to show you the possible graduate pathways beyond MITB. All right, so that's all I have. Um, I think I have used less than 10 minutes. I'll stop sharing now. Thank you, Michelle, and, and, and thank you, uh, uh, M as well. Let me just turn on my video back up again. I'm still here. So, so there were a couple of questions that, that came on and I tried to answer them uh, by typing in the response section. Uh, but I think one of the common theme in, from other sessions as well is that how much does my undergraduate matters uh, when I'm thinking about a postgraduate program? I guess, it, I guess uh, the, the quick answer for that is really depends on you're look, you know, what you're looking at and how you're transitioning. For certain degrees, uh, the LLM, for example, you do need to have a background uh, in law, whether it's a law degree or working in the law area. For JD, it's a, it's a wide range of, of disciplines that people can come in from. And, and same as uh, MITB, uh, Michelle was talking about about half are uh, for more of the uh, uh, traditional computer science engineering type courses, but they also take students from other disciplines. And, and that varies from program to program. And I think one of the, in some ways, a challenge is also a good thing that you have a choice, is to think about what fits you best and what will get you to where you want to be in a career aspiration. Um, so, so I think that's just a general comments in terms of what you need uh, from your previous undergraduate degree to take a postgraduate program. Uh, a, a few, uh, we have mentioned a little bit about uh, uh, COVID and, and so on. Obviously, we are all impacted by COVID. Uh, as you know, the IHLs are, are closed. We are currently closed. Uh, and we're waiting for further directive from the government with social distancing and, and, and safety and so on. But as uh, from tomorrow, uh, some activities are, are beginning to start again. Uh, and we hope that, that, that our uh, Singapore conditions will continue to improve. And, and there, will, there will be classes, uh, opportunity for, for interactions, whether inside class or outside class, come August. But obviously, nobody can promise that. So in terms of planning, we have also have a plan in place where if situations are not favorable, and as M said, we have all the technology and the, and, and, and the infrastructure to run things uh, online, so that still be the case come August. But in terms of planning and so on, we have to plan with the worst case scenario. We don't want to plan for online classes and we don't want to plan with real, you know, live classes. And then when things doesn't work, we have to fall back to something. So we are designing a lot of courses in your term one as if it will be online. Uh, again, I think that's the most prudent uh, thing that we can do. And we, are try we understand this is a difficult time for a lot of our uh, people who are looking at, at, at careers uh, and so on. So in fact, we are making it a lot easier for, you know, again, SMU alumni, local AU alumni to take uh, this opportunity to upgrade themselves because there is no better time to upgrade yourself when, when, when the economy is actually going down. Historically, when the economy is going down, that's when graduate program enrollment go up because people are using that opportunity to upgrade themselves um, and, and equip themselves for the next, um, you know, growth. Uh, later on in their career. So I think this is a variety of considerations that you, that you would take. Uh, today, you heard from SOL, our law school, and our SIS, our information system school. But in, 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 in total, I think, I think it, it, it is, if you have a choice in terms of thinking what you want to do, it, it is a good thing. It does take uh, time for you to research and find out. At SMU, we care about fit a lot. So while academic entry is one fit issue, but we also look at your work experience, what you bring into the program and, and, and things that make you special. So I think if you have any hesitations in terms of trying to figure out whether you, you could be accepted or not within our programs, again, the best way is really to contact us, tell us, you know, send us your resume, tell us what you have done, what you want to do, and we can help you, we can you know, talk about how we can help you get where you want to be. 
Uh, I think we, we sort of finish uh, time-wise, but because this is the last session, we, we don't have a hard bell uh, rang at us. So perhaps I'll just go back to uh, M, uh, Marcia, one more time to, to, to for some closing words. I've answered all the questions that's on the screen. Uh, so M, perhaps a few parting words, and I'll go for Michelle as well for a few going away advice, and then we can call it a day uh, for, for, for Headhunt today. Okay, I think um, what I would say is that um, as, as perhaps uh, typical as it sounds, every crisis provides opportunities. And I think here, it's not just that you may want to go back to university and take the time, hit the pause button and acquire new skills. You also want to think which kind of areas, industries are likely to think out of the crisis. And the reality of it is law is going to be one of them for the simple reason that you see that now already. There are issues about contracts that have been concluded, people that need to be paid, um, businesses being closed. So if you're thinking, should I move into law? Will there be work for me? I think I can say, yes, there will be. If you've been toying with the idea, just go for it. Michelle? Um, there's never a good time to study a master degree, all right? If technology especially is moving so fast, the more you wait, the further you'll be behind the curve. So if you are ready in terms of your life, in terms of your readiness, in terms of, I don't know, your career, your family, so on, um, just start it because uh, there's just so much to learn. The longer you wait, the um, further you'll be at back of the curve, right? Okay, uh, uh, with that, uh, I thank uh, everybody again for, for... Sorry, do you have something else, Michelle? Uh, no, no, your screen looks frozen. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, okay, with that, uh, uh, virtual clap for everybody, uh, uh, for Marsha and Michelle, for spending time uh, talking to everybody, and for the rest of you uh, who have uh, participated in today's uh, uh, webcast through Zoom. So I wish you all the best. Uh, explore your options. Uh, we hope that we can be one of your options that you consider. And in the meantime, as, as, uh, as, as it is very important, stay safe, uh, be well, and happy exploring. Thank you very much, everybody. And thank you to Headhunt as well. <laughs>